Welcome, everybody. Here we go. Let's get started. First video lesson of the year. Hope you guys are excited. This is going to be a little bit different, but hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Little Algebra 1 on your phones, on your computers, on your TV screen. Mr. Waz coming at you live from no matter where you're watching. All right, here we go. First video lesson for this year for this chapter. We are going to talk about evaluating expressions and looking at order of operations. So as we go through this first video lesson, again, this might be new for some of you guys as we go through this. Watching a video, taking notes, and then doing work in class. The whole purpose of this, guys, is for you to take ownership of your education. All right, I want you to learn from this video. I want you to pick up things. And, of course, when you come to class, ask plenty of questions. So your goal for this as we work through this video lesson is to watch the video and take good notes. Remember that this is a video. Now, what can you do with any sort of video? Is You can pause at any time. You can rewind at any time. You can rewatch this as many times as you wish. So as I go through this video, I may tell you to pause. I may tell you to stop and rewind. I may tell you to rewind or to rewatch it at times. Okay? Use that and do that. Okay? The goal for you is to really actively take notes. Pay attention to what's going on in the video. Don't watch it without thinking. Pay attention, take good notes, and ask questions. On your packets, you should find a column on the left where you can place any questions you may have and bring them to class and we'll answer them. So let's jump right into this lesson. against these 
guys because they're brutal in, in maintaining this so-called fake false climate consensus. And one thing I really would like to do is, is like open up that field so uh, and, and restore some semblance of free speech to it so people can actually advance different theories without fearing that uh, 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 a handful of people who control the debate are going to come down and crush their careers. I mean, we always hear this thing, Jay, you know, there's a 97% consensus. Uh, and, and the best response to that is if there's a 97% consensus, how come it's always Michael Mann and four or five other guys who turn up on all the radio and TV shows and magazine articles whenever this thing is talked about? I mean, the, the, the climate of control here uh, is really damaging. I, I noticed this is volume one. Is that a joke or are there really so many scientists calling Michael Mann a fraud? You need a second volume here. No, no, I, uh, I, I, it's not a joke. There, there, is, a, uh, there is a volume two. And, you know, anyone who's been in the, uh, 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 exposed to the American court system knows you might as well just sort of settle in for the duration. Uh, and so I'm figuring, you know, if this thing comes to trial around the year 2037, 2058, I, I want to have uh, a, a whole series of books out on this thing by the time we actually uh, stand up in court and right. go in on this. I, I have Mark Stein on. I can't focus just on the book. I need to ask some other questions, such as, what is your what is your take on Hillary's emails, and why are we just not calling her what she is by now? She's, she's a liar and a criminal. Yeah, and I think this is actually probably, um, you know, one of the biggest disasters for uh, American national security that there has ever been. Normally, uh, you have to burrow quite deep into the system uh, to get access to, to, to valuable information. The Soviets knew that. You have to find somebody who's high up in the intelligence services and turn them, and that's a long, slow, laborious process. In this case, it seems clear that all America's enemies uh, pretty much knew what uh, America's most confidential foreign policy considerations were in lifetime. Uh, the, the British Foreign Secretary at the time, she was Secretary of State, uh, was well aware of the insecurity and was trying to find workarounds. Tony Blair, who, who's a big Middle East envoy uh, since he stopped being Prime Minister, was also aware of the insecurity and didn't like to use Hillary's email. So if your allies know it, and chances are the Russian foreign minister was also aware of this email, the Chinese foreign minister. And the question then is, is what did they do with it? So it's not a just a, let's get Hillary. Ooh, this is this is nothing. It's just about uh, uh, sex in the Oval Office, like they used to say about uh, Monica Lewinsky. This is about the most serious, reckless breach uh, of the nation's most confidential secrets. And I don't, I don't see, I don't see how she can even stick around in the game until Iowa. I think she's got to be gone before Iowa, and I think Obama knows that. And at some point, this is going to turn very legally problematic for her, and she'll be faced with a choice uh, between getting a pardon on Obama's last day in office, uh, or actually being uh, dragged uh, into some serious legal jeopardy over this. I hope you're right because the Clintons are like vampires; they just never, they never go away. Yeah, 
that it's not going to use that uh, to malign and murderous effect. I, I think this is one of the most irresponsible foreign policy decisions by any great power in the last 200 years. All right, first we've got a little bit of vocabulary for you. So as I go through this again, um, right now would be a good time to pause the video. Notice how I have some vocabulary. So before I go into the explanation, I'm going to slow it. I might go a little longer in my explanation today. But normally when you see a vocabulary, you want to pause and write it down and then press play when you're ready to go so you can pay attention. So first vocabulary word we have is variable. So again, you might want to pause to write down the definition. All right, when we get into algebra, this is where it gets a little tricky because also we're going to start throwing letters into the mix. We're no longer just using numbers, but we may use letters such as X, Y, Z. Heck, may throw an R in there. We might get even sassier and use Greek letters like a theta, all right, or let's say alpha, or even, hey, beta. Okay, and what we're going to use is use a letter to represent something. That's what a, a variable is. A variable is going to be 
something we use to represent something we don't know. It's just natural thought, okay? I'm saying, well, something plus two gives me four. Well, that's something we're just mathematically writing down as x. We're using a letter to represent something we don't know. And then, our and then as we go through this chapter and other chapters, our goal is then to solve for whatever that variable represents. Okay, so variable is a word we use to represent a number, or sorry, a letter that will represent some sort of number. Okay? All right, next definition, algebraic expression. An expression is something that includes at least one variable. So, for example, simplest terms, x, that's technically an expression. x represents something I don't know that I'm trying to figure out what it is. I'm going to get more complicated if I say x plus 2. That's an expression. All right? If I say 2 times x, okay, this is going to be times. Let me put that as a dot. 2 times x, that's an expression. Okay? When we have at least one variable written down, that's what's called an expression. All right? Next definition, evaluate. Okay, so again, pause here, write down the definition of evaluate. What does it mean to evaluate? Evaluate means you are going to substitute a number in for a variable, and you are going to perform the operation that's shown in the expression. So when I say evaluate, you are now going to plug in. This is simply plug and chug. You may have heard that before. But if I say, for example, um, that in this case n equals 3, whoopsie daisies, when I say n equals 3, I'm telling you that n represents the number 3. So when I give you an expression, for example, of n minus 2, when I say evaluate this expression, evaluate means I'm going to take what n is equal to. n equals 3. I know that that's what n is. I'm going to plug this number 3 in for n. I'm going to substitute it in. Substitute means to replace. So instead of saying n, I'm going to say 3 minus 2, which I can then evaluate. Well, what's 3 minus 2? 1. So what I'm saying is that when n is equal to 3, that 3 minus 2 is 1. That's what it means to evaluate. Plug in and solve. Okay, now let's try a second one. 5n plus 2. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this n equals 3, and again, I'm going to replace that with n, or replace n with 3. So when I write this in, let's think about this one. Do I write it as 5, 3 plus 2, like literally replace it in there? Well, what does that say, 53 plus 2? Is that really what this means? Is that what 5n represents, is 5, 3 plus 2? No. What does it represent? When I write 5n, what does that mean? When I write a number next to a variable, what does that mean? It means multiplication. I'll write it as m, mult. It means multiplication. So when I say 5n plus 2, what I really mean is 5 times 3 plus 2. So I'm evaluating that, all right, where do I start? Okay, where do I start here? Well, do I do the 3 plus 2? Do I do the 5 times 3? All right? And that's kind of the next goal. I'm not going to simplify that. Let's save that for later. But once I plug in, once I evaluate what that is, when I plug n in or 3 in for n, where do I go from there? Okay. But again, evaluate. What that means is you're just going to take whatever the variable represents, that number, and you're going to plug it in. You're going to substitute the variable for the number it represents. Next definition we have is power. Okay, power represents an expression that re represents repeated multiplication of the same factor. You may have seen this before. We have our example, 5 with a exponent, or a number you can see all the way up here, of 3. Okay, well, what does this mean? This means 5 to the third power, which tells you that there are three factors of 5. Factors means multiplication. So when I see 5 to the third power, that literally means I'm going to take 5 times 5 times 5. I'm going to multiply three fives together. 5 times 5 would be 25. Times 5 again would give me 125. Okay? So when I write a power, that simply represents that I'm multiplying that together. Okay, let's try and do some examples here. So what I want you to do in each of these examples is that I want you to write it in words, and then I want you to write it as a product. 
Okay, so let's start writing it in words. So first one, I have 8 and a power of 3. So how would I write this in words? Well, think about how you would say it. This would be said 8 to the power of 3. So being able to translate this into words is important. 8 to the power of 3. Now as a product, what does that mean? Well, remember, 3 represents my factor. How many times am I multiplying 8 together? So as a product, this would be 8 times 8 times 8. Okay, And we could evaluate that, but all I want you to do is write as a product. Next one, we have a variable x, and we have a power 2. So how would we write this in words? This would be x to the power, sorry, running out of room, of 2. So x to the power of 2. Now, notice it's not a number like 8 to the power of 3 like we did in the last example. We have a variable. So when writing this as a product, just like we did here with the 8, 8 to the power of 3 meant I took 8 times itself 1, 2, 3 times. So x to the power of 2 means I'm going to take x and multiply it by itself two times. x times x. Okay, it seems funny because we have all those x's in there, x times x. Notice how I used a dot here to represent multiplication. Okay, So we can do this with both numbers and we can do it with variables. So up to this point, we've thrown at you some vocabulary words. We did a few examples um, with talking about variables, expressions, evaluating, powers. So now let's talk about when we have some more complicated expressions that we want to evaluate or we want to simplify, how do we go about doing this? Now you have probably seen this before in your life, order of operations. Order of operations is when we get an expression, for example, 2x plus 1 uh, let's say divided by 5. When I get an expression like this, how do I go about evaluating it? When I plug something in for x, when I evaluate it, how do I simplify? Do I, what order do I use? Well, order of operations is going to be something that we're going to use all the time when simplifying and evaluating expressions. So the term I like to use, you may have seen this start with a p, Sometimes you see with a G, I like to use a G, okay, because it's just a little, little more broad. So I like to use the acronym GEMDAS, GEMDAS, all right? The G stands for grouping symbols. What does grouping symbols mean? Grouping symbols are anything with parentheses. could have brackets. You could have the sassy brackets, or called braces. Kind of sloppy there. Um, ah. That's basically it, right? Those are grouping symbols. Parentheses, brackets, braces. Those are things to separate different um, expressions. So when I see grouping symbols, that means something within this parenthesis that we have another expression within an expression. We're trying to group things separately and do them separately before we do them together, if that makes sense. Next one is exponents. What are exponents? Exponents are powers. So that's going to be the next thing. So when I see, for example, 4 to the power of 3, after I do grouping, I'm going to do exponents next. So 4 to the power of 3, I would do after any grouping. Multiplication or division. Multiplication and division, they're basically just opposites of each other. All right. So I'm going to do those next. Multiply or division. Does it matter which one I do first? No. Now, in a problem or in an expression, it might make sense to do multiplication before division or vice versa. Okay? Just got to figure out which one's easier to do first. And then lastly, the last thing you want to do is addition or subtraction. Again, same thing with multiplication division. doesn't matter which one we do first, whichever one makes sense first. All right, so let's evaluate some expressions. I have two examples here for you. I'm going to go through them a little quick. So if you need me to pause or rewind, or sorry, you need to pause or slow down, that's when you need to pause or rewind, okay? So as we go through this, remember, GEMDAS, G-E-M-D-A-S, grouping, exponents, multiplication, division, adding, or subtracting. So when I look at this first expression, I see 3 parentheses 25 plus 5 squared divided by 50. First thing we look at, we want to look at grouping, we see parentheses, right? Now, we have to think about what parentheses mean. Grouping means we're taking things grouping them separately. But here I have 3 parentheses 25. So what does this really mean? This is grouping, yes, there's parentheses, but what is this really telling us? This is really telling us multiplication. 
and not actual grouping. So I'm not going to do this one right away. Other than that, I don't see any grouping. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to exponents. Do I have any exponents or powers? Yes, I have 5 to the second power. So again, 5 to the second power, what does that represent? This represents 5 times 5. So using our calculators, what's 5 times 5? It's 25. So I have 3 times 25 plus 25, okay, divided by 50. So I did my exponents. Now let's move to multiplication division. So where do I see multiplication division? Well, I see 3 times 25, and then I see this line which represents division and in 50. So I have 3 times 25 plus 25 divided by 50. So here I have multiplication and division all in one. Now which one do I do first? Okay. Hopefully as you're thinking about it, you're going to do 3 times 25 first. Why? It all has to deal with the divided by 25. I am not divide, or sorry, divided by 50. I am not just dividing this by 50. I'm also dividing this by 50. Okay? So I'm dividing each of these by 50. So what would make the most sense is let's clean this mess up up here before we divide by 50. So let's look at the top. Ignoring down here, we have 3 times 25 plus 25. Well, I have to do multiplication first before I do adding. So I'm going to go 3 times 25. 3 times 25 is equal to 75 plus 25 over 50. Now, if I pause here, you might think, okay, I'm going to do division, divide by 50. But be careful with this one. I gave this to you on purpose. Notice how it's 75 plus 25 divided by 50. This means I'm dividing both 75 and 25 by 50. So again, clean your mess up first before you do this. I have 75 plus 25. Let's evaluate that. 75 plus 25 is 100. Divided by 50, now I can simplify. Now I just left with two numbers divided. 100 divided by 50, plug into your calculator, is 2. So where we had the trick here was with this divided by 50. Now that we got that divided by 50 figured out, right, we kind of know what to do. Next one, I have 8, I have a bracket here, and then I have 20 minus parentheses, 9 minus 5, close parentheses, to the second power, close the bracket. Okay, so here I have a bracket with the 8 on the outside. So, order of operations, we're going to start with the grouping symbols first. So I'm going to start in the outside grouping symbols. That means I can't deal with this 8 next to the bracket, which means, again, just like up here, multiplication. So i got to go inside. Inside, I have 20 minus 9 minus 5 squared. So I have subtraction. Well, subtraction's got to go before or go after at the very end. Well, I have 9 minus 5 inside here. So again, look at I have parentheses, and I have a power. So where do I start? Well, we're going to start inside in the deepest part of the mess. I have parentheses or breaks, br grouping here. I have grouping here, and then I have powers. So I'm going to start inside at 9 minus 5, and I'm going to evaluate that first. So 9 minus 5, 4. So what I get then is 8, bracket, 20 minus 4 to the second power, and then close that. Okay, now what do I do next? Well, after grouping, I'm going to go ahead and do exponents. Now you may say, what about these groupings? Well, I have to, before I do this grouping, I have to take care and just like I did up here, clean up the mess inside. So what's 4 to the second power? Well, again, that's 4 times 4. What's 4 times 4? That's 16. So this gives me 8. And notice how when I'm not affecting, I'm not doing anything with the other numbers, they stay the same. 4 to the second power is 16. Now inside I have 20 minus 16, so that's going to give me 4. So what I have 8, brace 4, sorry, bracket 4. Now again, what does it mean, just like we said up top, when I have 8 with a grouping symbol and then a number? So number, grouping symbol, number. This, again, tells us multiplication. So 8 times 4 is going to give me 32. All right? So again, working within our grouping symbols and starting in the most complicated spot and working our way out to something simplified. All right, lastly, let's bring it all together. So what we're going to do is evaluate, and then we are going to use our order of operations. So evaluate each expression. The first one, we have 6y to the second power, minus 13, and I want to know what, I want you to evaluate, again evaluate means you're going to substitute in, plug in, each expression, and in this one you're going to substitute or evaluate when y is equal to 11. So how the heck do I do this? 
So when I say evaluate, what you're going to do is you're going to take the number 11 and you're going to substitute it in for y. And what you're going to do when you do that is you're going to think about what is being done to y when I rewrite this. So remember, I have 6 blank to the power of 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place 11 in that box minus 13. Now let's just think quickly. The reason why I use that box, I want you to think what's being done. I have 6, and then I have the y next to it. This means multiplication. So when I write this, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a grouping symbol, parentheses, to re represent multiplication. So that's going to tell me 6 times 11. Then I'm going to keep my power of 2, because that's also being performed on the number 11, or the variable y. And then lastly, I have minus 13. So what this then says is 6 times 11 to the second power, minus 13. So the question is, where do I start? Okay, so if you think about order of operations, where would I start first? Well, grouping symbols. I see a grouping symbol parentheses here, but just 11 inside. So I can't do anything with what's inside. So next thing I go to is exponent. So I have 11 to the second power. What does this mean? This means 11 times 11. So plug it into your calculator. What's 11 times 11? 11 times 11 is 121. Times 6, and then minus 13. I'm going to keep everything else. Okay, so I did exponents. The next thing is multiplication and division. So do I see multiplication? You betcha, right here. 6 times 121. So I'm going to plug that into my calculator. 121 times 6 is 726. Then lastly, I have 726 minus 13. So I'm going to subtract 13 because that's the last expression I have. And that's going to give me 713. Relatively big number. Okay, so evaluated. I plugged in. Then I simplified. All right, last one I have, b to the third power minus 21. What does this symbol mean here? Divided by 5b plus 9. So I have two b's in here. So when I say evaluate when b equals 3, I'm going to take 3, and I'm going to substitute it in no matter where I see b. So think about how many times do I have to substitute 3 in in this problem. Hopefully you said and thought twice. So I'm going to take this number 3 and plug it in here, and I'm going to plug it in there. So I have five, sorry, b to the third. So I'm going to write that as 3 to the third power minus 21. All that divided by 5. Now when I substitute the b, I'm going to do the same thing I did up here. When I substitute it, use parentheses. 5 times 3 plus 9. Now I simplify. So I look, do I have any grouping symbols? Yes, I have it down here. I have 3 by itself. All right, so it's a parenthesis grouping symbol, 3 by itself. I can do this right away, but really this means multiplication. So I'm going to just leave that for now. I'm going to go up next. Do I see any exponents? I see exponents up here. So 3 to the third power, what does that mean? This means 3 times 3 times 3. What does that equal? Well, 3 times 3 times 3, that is 27. Subtract from that 21. Divide all that by 5, parentheses 3 plus 9. So again, I'm leaving everything else. Okay, now, up here, can I do 27 minus 21? Okay, well, sure, you know what? Actually, I can work with this right now. Let's simplify the top. Let's clean up this mess first. So 27 minus 21, what does that equal? 6. All right, now let's go to the bottom. I have 5 parentheses 3 plus 9. So what do I have to do there? Well, I have parentheses, which, again, we said represents multiplication, then addition. Which one do I do first? Multiplication. So 5 times 3 is 15 plus 9. And now lastly, I have 15 plus 9 in the bottom. We can simplify that. That's going to give us 6 divided by 15 plus 9 is 24. Now, my answer is 6 divided by 24. Does six, can 6 be divided by 24? You may look at this and say, yeah, it's 4. But remember, 6 is smaller than 24. So what we're left with is our dreaded friends, the fractions. Uh-oh, Pischettios. So what I'm going to do here is just simplify. I want to take this fraction, and we're going to put it into lowest terms, if you remember. Okay, so what number goes into both 6 and 24? Easy way you think about it, it's just an, uh, sorry, it's an even number. So I see that 2 would go into both. So if I simplify by dividing each by 2, that becomes a 3, and that becomes a 12. Okay, now think about 3. The only number that goes into 3 is 1 and 3. So does 3 go into 12? Oh, yeah, it does. So I can divide each by 3 to give me 1, 
and to give me 4. So it's going to be a given a fraction of 1 over 4. All right, so this one a little more complicated because I asked you to evaluate, and then I also asked you to do order of operations. All right, so here are the, how are these last problems are going to work. When I, when every day or every lesson you look at, you're going to see the you try section. Okay, here's what I want you to do. You're going to take the skills you just learned, hopefully, in this video, and I'm going to give you some problems, maybe similar, maybe different, maybe easier, maybe harder, maybe just as difficult as the problems we did in class. All right, and the goal is for you to pause the video and try it yourself. And then I am going to display all at once the entire solution and you are going to compare it to what you have. And if you did things wrong, hopefully you'll see what you did. So here's what I want you to do right now. I want you to pause the video. Pause it. If you didn't pause it, you're going to pause it right now. So go ahead, pause. Now. Alrighty, here's your solution. Okay, first one I have 1 plus 5 to the second power plus 5. So evaluating, I started inside the parentheses, 1 plus 5 is 6. Then I applied the power. Okay, nothing else changed, so apply the power. 6 times 6 is 36, plus 5 gives me 41. So my answer there is 41. That's the solution when you evaluate. Next one, this one's a little tricky. I give you H and K. I give you two variables. So the H, you got to plug in for H, and the K, you plug in and substitute for K, right? And then it rewrites as 4 minus 2, parentheses 2 minus 2. So order of operations, the grouping symbols first, 2 minus 2, you're going to start inside here. What's 2 minus 2? 0. Then I'm going multiplication division. There's no exponents, so I'm going to do 2 times 0, which is 0. Then adding and subtracting first, I have subtraction. 4 minus 0 is 4. Okay. So again, we are talking about evaluating, substituting in for variables, and then using order of operations to solve. All right, if you need to rewind or go back to any point in the video, please do so now. Otherwise, if you have any questions, write them down, and I will see you in class. The goal for when we get back to class is for you to work on practice problems and ask me plenty of questions. All right, we'll see you in class. Peace.